the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about frame of reference because um, to me, frame of reference is very confusing uh, because it's, you know, if this person's your frame of reference or if this thing's your frame of reference or this thing, and it's it's totally different every time. And it's it to me, it's confusing. So um, to do frame of reference um, problems, and this seems like really elementary, is I'll actually draw a picture. So this is, um, and I'll draw a pretty simple picture because, um, you know, I teach science, not art. And so my art skills are, are very, very poor. So um, in this one, we've got a girl on a train and the train is headed east at 100 miles an hour. So this is my train. And I'm going to write 100 miles per hour east. And, um, and then the girl, and like my, my art is so bad that I'm not even going to draw hair on this girl. Um, she's just like a stick figure. And she's walking five miles per hour towards the back of the train. Okay. So then it asks you, what is the speed and direction of the train if the girl is the frame of reference? Now, this one kind of blows my mind um, every time because since the girl is the frame of reference and she's inside that train, then the speed of the train is whatever the speed the girl is going. So the speed of the train relative, you know, if the girl is your frame of reference is just five miles per hour west, which, you know, blows my mind because the train is going 100 miles per hour in the other direction. Um, and you can think of it as kind of like, um, you know, if you're sitting in a car, if you're inside that car and, you know, don't look out the windows or anything, um, but you're sitting in that car and you're driving your car, let's say you're in the passenger seat, maybe that's a little safer. And you're sitting there in the passenger seat and you look around your car, you're not moving, right? You're just sitting, you're not walking or anything like that. And so, you know, if you don't look out the window or anything like that, and you just kind of sit in your car and someone's driving, you don't know that the car's moving, right? I mean, let's pretend we don't hear wind noise and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, your, your velocity is just, you know, relative to you is zero because you're just sitting in the car, you're not moving. Now, if you were like crawling to the back of the car, you know, to get like a book or something. And maybe you shouldn't do that while you're driving because it's not safe. But let's say you were crawling to the back of the car and at like 0.5 miles per hour, then your speed, you know, relative to you, if you are the frame of reference is that 0.5 miles towards the back of the car. Um, so that's kind of how I have to think about it. And literally every time, every semester, when we do these frame of reference problems, um, I actually, it's, it's kind of silly. I have to go back and watch videos of myself explaining how to do frame of reference problems. I know that's I know that's really really silly, um, but that's what I have to do because I just you know I I forget it and it's it's just you know it's not the way my brain thinks it should go, but it's it's how it's how physics works. So um, just you know if you um um if if it if it kind of blows your mind too that that's okay. Um, so now we're going to do another one and, um, we're going to use the tracks as the frame of reference. So we've still got, um, our girl, we've got our train, it's going hundred miles per hour east. We've got our girl, she's going five miles per hour west. And we're using the tracks as a frame of reference, right? So, so these guys, um, and the tracks are outside the train and it's not moving. So we want to know the speed of the girl. So because the tracks are outside the train and not moving, the speed of the girl is going to be that 100 miles per hour minus the speed that she's going towards the back of the train because that kind of like cancels out a little bit of that speed because you know she's walking backwards. And so, you know, if if the tracks were not an inanimate object, which they are, and they had like feelings and eyes and things like that, the tracks would think that she was going 95 miles per hour because she's going backwards, which again, that one makes a little more sense to me than the, than the very first one, um, because it just, the first one just seems weird to me, but um, that's kind of how that one goes. And now we'll do one more and we're going to use two moving objects. And, it, and by the way, if you guys have questions at any point in time, just type them in the chat box and um, you know, I'll answer them. You do not have to wait to the end or anything like that because um, I know when I am in class and I have questions and the teacher makes me wait to the end, by the time we get to the end, 
I've forgotten what my question was to begin with, or I think my question's maybe not all that important as I thought it was. And it really is important because you wouldn't have had it if it, you know, if it wasn't important. So just ask it whenever you're ready, um, whenever you have a question. So now in this one, we've got two trains. We've still got the one with the girl and the 100 miles per hour and all that stuff. But then we have the second train and the second train is going 50 miles per hour west. So we'll call this our second train and we'll call this one the first one just so we can tell them apart. So if we're using the second train as the frame of reference, we want to know what's the speed of the first train. Okay. And so in this one, they're going opposite directions, right? So the, the, the second train is speeding off to the west at 50 miles per hour. And the other one is speeding off to the east at 100 miles per hour. So they're, they're, they're both moving fast away from each other. Okay. So if you're, you know, sitting on that second train and you're looking towards the other one, it doesn't look like the other train is moving 100 miles per hour away from you, right? It looks like the other train is moving your 50 miles per hour plus that 100 miles per hour away from you. It's going like extra fast. So if we're using the second train as the frame of reference, um, the speed of the first train is going to be like 100 plus 50. And it's going to be like 150 miles per hour. Does, does that make sense to you all? Um, because that train is, you know, they're going in like opposite directions. Okay. Okay, good. Um, so that's kind of these frame of reference problems. Okay, good, good, good. I'm, I'm glad it's making sense. Um, that's kind of how we do these frame of reference. I wanted to do a couple different examples of those because they're weird. And like I said, they, um, they kind of blow my mind. 